This is a tutorial for Terry. If you want to learn how to use this character, how to fight against this character, or improve your own version of him, then this is for you. In these tutorials, I'm going to go over all the characters' normals and specials in full detail so you could get a full understanding of how to play them effectively. For example, what buttons are best for combos, anti-airing, and poking, and things like that. Or which buttons do you want to ignore or not even use at all. So the point is to give you a purpose behind every move you make. Because KOF is a kind of game where you're going to be moving around a lot, doing a lot of things here and there. I want to make sure that every player who picks up any kind of character gets a full understanding of like that there's a there's an intent behind every move that you make on the screen all right so let's start off with his close normals so uh terry let's see he does for terry's close a he does a little elbow check right here so let me just go ahead and demonstrate some of the anti-air properties for that so for example my back's in the corner uh that's the wrong that's the wrong uh, recording to utilize so let me switch that real quick Start anew. Uh, that's also the wrong one. My bad. Okay, this is one. So there you go, anti air A. It's a better to use this one because it's a little bit faster. You don't need a lot of reaction to it or commitment compared to other buttons like you know far D, far C, and things like that. So if they're really up in your face and hopping into you, then it's this is the button you would use. It gets a full jump in. You might want to use a different button instead. All right, close B. So close B is not a low hitting attack, but it does combo from scratching B, standing A, and crouching A. So it links from other normals, but it doesn't link to other normals. It does combo into his command normal. So something you want to do if you have it, if you want an easy string for Terry, you can do something like that. All right, so close C. It's a two hitting normal, uh, you can combo into his rising upper or his back knuckle, but you want to keep in mind that if the character, if the opponent is blocking, your, your rising upper is going to whiff. So this is not a button that you want to use, if you have them on block, you want to cancel into something else, or don't cancel at all. But either way, don't cancel it into rising upper because they might be able to whiff punish you in between. But otherwise, this one is pretty good because, you know, with two hits, um, you, you have more than enough time to hit confirm into a quick max. That's about it. Alright, next up we have close D. One thing I want to mention before I go on to the other parts of this move is that it forces the carry to stack. So I don't know what the benefit of this is for Terry because he doesn't have any specific situations where the character needs to be standing. But, you know, just for your information, it does do that. Alright, so close D has more damage, 80 damage compared to close C 78, but in a, I know it's a two digit, uh, two, to only two, you know, number difference, but in a huge combo, it makes a world of difference. The damage output is going to be uh, completely different, especially since two D is two, um, close C is two hits. So it's going to add a little bit more damage scaling than close D. Now between close C and close D, close D comes out a little slower, but as close C comes out faster, and close C, the distance in which you need to for this move to come out is a lot more lenient than close D. So right here, nah, not there, but right here, close C will hit, but far D will come out instead of his close D. So if you're doing a combo and you're running up to them, um, something you want to keep in mind is the distance. So for example, if you're trying to hit confirm from a four mana, then you might want to pick your you might want to pick close C over close D. There are cases where your close D will come out, but again, keep in mind, because you need the longer you need to be closer, you also you have to let the quick max run up a little bit longer, which means your close D, which comes out slower, might not even connect. So Consistency wise, uh, close C is a better point to use, but for full damage, then use close D. There are different hit confirms that allow you to just always get close D. I'll get to them when we do, when we cover the cover, uh, when we cover the combo portion of this tutorial. Alright, far normals. So we have far A, far B, far C, and far D. So far A is basically your far version of close A, which is just 
your anti-air, anti-hop tool. Comes out fast, Angle's a kind of a tall character, uh, Terry's a kind of a tall character, so it's gonna be able to just get that good coverage. For B, reaches really far. Uh, I think farther than other games in the KOF series, but uh, I, well, actually, I actually haven't played all of them, but uh, the good thing about this is that you can combo up to four normals thanks to far B. And if you're... Which this can also allow you to get a full combo hit control. Alright. There we go. So yeah. So this is a button that's very good for hit confirms from lights if you're gonna get uh, attack up three or four hits. Other than that, it's just a good poke to use for Terry, and you're gonna be using it a lot in this neutral game. Far C and Far D. So Far C is kind of like the hard version of Far A. It reaches farther, it's faster than Far D, and it is super cancelable. So there we go. The super cancel window is not a uh, is not uh, huge compared to other normals in the game, but it does exist. And you're gonna have to preemptively put in the button, and it's not something where the buffer window is big enough that you can buffer and then uh, press the button on reaction. Uh, far C, it's not something you want to do. Um, far C, I would say it's a good mid distance anti hop tool. For example, if your far D comes out a little bit too slow, you want to anti air, but Honestly, between all the four normals in this game, you're not gonna see a lot of you're not gonna use it a lot unless, let's say, you just want to poke them from a far distance, but then uh, you kind of want to do a little bit faster. So far C would be your choice. But otherwise, you're gonna be using a lot of far D because this move has an extreme amount of range. You can hit him for probably like two character spaces away, and no matter where you hit him. Into a quick max confirm, you're always gonna get your close D hit confirm. Uh, so that's gonna be very useful. And by the way, getting a far D into a quick max with Terry is gonna be key to neutral. Being able to hit confirm off of this on reaction is gonna add a lot to your uh, potential as a Terry player. Alright, another thing about far D is that semi uh, semi whiffs on crouching characters, so if Terry's standing here, if Far D is gonna make, it's gonna connect. But from here, uh, it's just gonna whiff. You get, it doesn't whiff entirely. If you're close enough, it will combo. Uh, not combo, but it will hit. But keep in mind that if they're a little bit too far, then it's gonna whiff. But on the bright side, uh, because Terry's so far, you're not gonna be able to. They're not gonna be able to whiff punish you, unless they're crouching C or D is really good. But yeah, for the most part, it's going to be safe, even on uh, a whiff. Alright, let's see. Oh, and also because of the hitbox of this move, it also makes for a great anti-air. anti, anti -air. So, for example... Let's see. That's a good button to use. Even close up, the far D is able to anti-air them. So that's why among all your four normals, you're going to be using a lot of B and D. Just because of the superior range and the fact that the, the other buttons don't provide as much utility to it. Alright, crouching normals. So, for my tutorials, I'm just gonna mainly brush over crouching A and crouching B because typically the pattern is crouching B doesn't have special cancel properties. It combos into crouching A, which does have cancel properties into a command normal or a special, but it uh, that's about that's about it. And some of them, some characters can combo the crouching bees together. But yeah, uh, that's about it. All right, crouching C though for Terry is really good. So first of all, it's your cancelable crouching normal other specials. So you can do something like this. Secondly, it's a decent poke. It comes out relatively fast and it has an amazing hitbox. In fact, the hitbox on this is kind of ridiculous, so let me show you what I mean. So, you can actually use this as an anti-air. Oh, that, time, that, that time the button was not in my favor, but here's where it gets ridiculous. So, he's gonna double hop on me. And then I can anti-air him even from here. In fact, let me run up a bit. Look at this. In what world is this alright? He 
the, char the character is behind him, but yet Terry is able to anti-air him from behind just like this. So, there's a really good anti-air. It doesn't look anything like an anti-air, but it is. Uh, <laughs> So that's something that you want to use a lot if the characters, if the other people are jumping in on you a lot. And keep in mind, it's not like an ultimate, amazingly anti-air. Obviously, if they're a little bit more vertical above you, then it might not have that magic for you of anti-air. But still, uh, keep it, just don't underestimate this button. And one last thing about this is that crouching C's cancelable windows is extremely late. In fact, uh, so late that it might not even combo. But it's going to be very useful if, let's say, you don't have a quick max, you're not confident in a quick max confirm, but you want to combo into a super. See how far that comboed and how far that, uh, the, the, the other terror is away? So yeah, um, I'm not doing a good job of buffering right now, but maybe, uh, there you go. So I think for the late cancel, the Buster Wolf will always connect because it's so fast, but his other specials might not. So this will combo, but that will not combo. Alright. Crouching D. So this is going to be his sweep above. Compared to other sweeps in this game, I would say it's above average, just because Terry's a bit of a taller character. And the great thing about his sweep is that you can special cancel it even on whiff. So if you sweep them, you lock them down with a fireball. If you manage to miss them and jump over you, you can just use a back shoot and cover both the air and the ground. And that's going to be very useful and something that you really want to use in your neutral Terry gameplay. Alright, now jumping normals. So Terry has a two neutral jumping buttons. Jumping A and jumping B. Now, I'm not going to really go over these a lot because they don't really have that much of a, of a utility or use for them. And both, honestly, both of them are kind of the same in functionality. So both of them are angled kind of, you know, horizontal hitboxes. So they both have air-to-air -air properties. The jumping B is going to be even better. Um, jumping A, I can't tell, but it probably comes out a little bit faster. But for the most part, I'll just say that they come out around the same speed. So if you're going to do a, a neutral jumping normal, just go with the jumping B. Now something to keep in mind is that they both whiff on crouching characters, so if you want to jump in with a character with a neutral jump, use C or D. Don't use A or B. Alright, now onto his regular jumping normals. So jumping A, this has a really good hitbox. Yeah, I pressed it kind of a little early in the air. And you're st it's a little bit active too, so well, that's a little bit too early. But there you go. See how low that he can hit him with it? Alright, now, this is a really good normal to use. Uh, jumping B is kind of like the same as the neutral B. It was over crouching characters, and because of the angled uh, hitbox for it, you might you just you can use it for air to airs. Or, for example, if they're kind of far away and they use a fireball and you want to connect as soon as you can before they recover, then your jumping B is a good shot at doing that. Alright, jumping C and jumping D. So, jumping C is faster than jumping D, but because of the shorter range, you need to hit deeper with it, so in order to hit a crouching character. Jumping D, on the other hand, has more range, so you don't need to worry about that. You hit them from pretty far up, actually, and still combo from it. So, for air normals, with Terry, you're gonna want to use uh, a lot of jumping D and jumping A. So jumping A is just for timing purposes because of the late hitbox, you don't have to worry about pressing jumping D at a specific time in the air in order to still get a full combo. Alright, now let's go over. Oh, yeah, uh, one more thing cross up properties. Terry does not have a cross up in this game. There are cases where jumping D uh, might cross up. But it's going to be very difficult to actually get that. Uh, a lot of the normals that cross up by maybe a one percent chance is only because uh, it's only because the opponent is moving at the same time you're jumping. So something like jumping A and jumping D normally don't cross up on a character that's not moving. But if a character somehow moves, they might extend their hitbox in a certain way, which allows these normals to cross up when they otherwise it's not possible to. 
Alright, blowbacks. So, let's go with, uh, let's start with stunning blowback and area blowback. So the area one, I'm just gonna go over it real quick. It's basically the area version of grounded one. It comes out a little fast, and it has a good hitbox. It, it does land on the characters if you press it late enough. Not all the way, if you press it too early, it's not, it's not gonna have the hitbox all the way down. You're gonna have to do it a little later. On the grounded version, it's a little bit of a Sobot style kick, meaning that Terrace is slightly off the ground, visually and hitbox wise, so he might be able to, it's possible for him to, let's see, let's see if I can set the dummy to throw a fireball using this slot right here. Alright, so as you can see, he can do a Sobot over a fireball, so for example, if you want to uh, if a character is using a grounded fireball and you kind of want to like, um, if you don't want to jump over it because they might be able to anti-air you or even anticipating it, you do something unexpected like this, lift cancel into a burn knuckle and catch them off guard. So that's something that's useful for Terry to know. But the more, what I really wanted to talk about is the range of this move, oops, the range of this move and your ability as a Terry, as Terry to follow up on his blowbacks. So, if you hit him anywhere on the screen, you're able to get C burn knuckle. Um, in a neutral game, my recommendation is to always cancel this into his D power charge. Now, it's not a true block string, so if they try to jump out of it, one guard jump, and then get hit, and you can get a follow up afterwards. Like that. Now, if you do hit the blowback, and you get the power charge and you get the wall stick, you can still fall with a burn knuckle or buster wolf or burn knuckle into buster wolf. Now if you get them in the corner with this move, you do combo with the open air. You can combo even further into something with a C rise attack. So honestly this blow is gonna be really good for Terry in terms of pressure. Alright, that's all of his normals. Let's go with his command normal. So we have his back knuckle and rising upper. So back knuckle is going to be your main hit confirmed from lights. Um, it's not special cancelable on its own, so you don't want to use this on block at all. You only want to use this on hit because because this move is going to be very punishable. Uh, they can, uh, for example, a Terry could bust a wolf through it. Some characters whose normals are far enough might be able to run up and do a light normal into a quick max confirm if the player is good enough. So that's something you want to look out for. And let's see, so from lights, so Terry's hit confirms a little bit tricky in this game, they're not as easy as it is in uh, 13 because his, uh, he doesn't have a target combo, but a good refined Terry player should be able to do 3 hits into his back knuckle. And I'm just scrap, I'm messing up right now, but there we go. So. This is the, this is the, the back knuckle is what you want to use for light confirms. And the good thing about this is because he's moving forward with his back knuckle, when he does his quick max confirms, he's always going to get a close normal. So in this case, you're going to have to decide between close C or close D and worry about which one's going to hit. You can just go ahead and go into, oops, you just go into close D without any worries about whether or not it's going to come out. So back knuckle with your Terry a useful hit confirm. Alright, the other normal uh, command normal is his rising upper. Now this is functions a little bit differently versus uh, compared to 13. So if you're used to fighting if you're used to playing 13 Terry, you might wanna rethink rising upper in this game. First of all, uh, it comes out in four frames. A lot of no normals in this game comes out uh, light normals come out in four frames, a lot of them. Especially the close ones. Uh, this one also comes out in four frames, which makes it really fast compared to other normals that I hit hard and you know go into a special cancel. This also makes it useful for Terry to anti-air with. So, for example, let's have the computer jumping in. Oops. Let me use a different recording. And it's special cancelable even if you use it even if you use it wrong. Uh, some uh, some normals in this game where 
we are we, with that could be special cancel can only be special cancel on the first frame this no matter how late you hit it you're still able to special cancel it see how you hit him at the end of his hitbox that's not the end of his hitbox this is the end of his hitbox so you could special cancel it so if you're anti-airing with this normal as you should you can go ahead and cancel it into burn knuckle to cross underneath them or you can go ahead and go in for a grab at which i botched so it's up to you how you want to anti-air it into it but my recommendation is always to use it as an anti-air or as a frame trap kind of well not a frame trap but like a, a setup because Pikachu is neutral on block so something that comes out in full frames will beat out what they might press so things like that alright so combo wise um, unlike the back knuckle his rising upper is special cancelable the problem is as I've said before, the range of this move. So, for example, on block, it's hard to uh, confirm into this. Now, you could still do close D into it, but you can't. It's very difficult to combo from into lights. So you get two hits at most, but you cannot. You can't get three hits. It's just gonna whiff completely. And if you can get two hits, you need to be really close up to do it. So from this distance, for example. It's gonna whiff. It has to be point blank range for this to connect. So combo wise, this uh, this command normal is not uh, is not uh, quick max friendly. All right, what else? Let's see. All right, that's all. That's it with his normals. Let's go ahead and move in with his specials. Actually, one more thing about rising upper is that it is more optimal to use compared to his back knuckle. His back knuckle, even though there's 70 here, for some reason combo wise, the rising upper uh, is more optimal for your damage. Alright, now let's move on to his specials, starting with Power Wave. So, the A version of Power Wave and the C version of Power Wave do the same amount of damage. There's no difference other than the other properties of the moves. Uh, sorry, there's no damage in, there's no difference in damage, but there is a lot of difference everywhere else. So, the A version has less recovery but more startup and it travels slow. The C version has less startup, it comes out faster, it travels faster, but he has more recovery. So, this is the version you want to use when you're far away from the point, especially if they're moving, especially since they're so far away and this projectile moves so fast, it's better to use the C version because if you use it too close, they might be able to punish you, especially on block. Alright, the A version is what you want to use on block and close up from the screen. Alright, uh, let's see. The X version is 3 hits and it travels even faster. The startup for this is actually slower than the A and C version, but once it comes up, it comes up pretty fast. But, uh, you're not going to be able to follow up with this move. Except with Barcelona. You won't be able to. What I mean is you won't be able to follow up on the Sonic Boom and Street Fighter and use it as a pressure. Because, because by the time they finish blocking, you know, you're gonna like they're gonna be able to press a button and interrupt you from doing whatever it is that you are planning to do. Alright, so that's it for Power Wave. Let's go with Burn Knuckle. So Burn Knuckle is gonna be your main special that you're gonna be using for Terry, especially to end combos. It's the most optimal uh, special for Terry in terms of combos. Uh, if you're using for for no bar, no bar combos, um, you can use it offensively from a distance. You don't need to use it in a combo. Use it from a range. Since it comes out so fast, it covers a good amount of distance. Uh, this is the max distance that you'll be able to land your burn knuckle. Uh, sorry, that's not the max distance. Uh, from here, that's your max distance. Uh, you can also use it as an anti-air. For example, let's say there. Uh, you throw some fireballs, you try to jump over or hop over, you can just use a burn knuckle on them to catch them. Um, there's, there is a punish... Uh, so the punish window for this move, how safe is it? So point blank, it's extremely punishable. It can punish you um, with a close normal. You can get a full punish if you use it. So obviously that's not where you want to use it. 
here, if you use the button knuckle, they won't be able to punish you. Actually, let me go ahead and record the dummy to slot 4. I didn't have the block afterwards. Alright. So that's the punish uh, distance. That is difficult. That's punishable only by lights. From here, you can punish with lights. Uh, I was a little bit too slow. Uh, still too slow. Uh, my buttons are yeah. Okay, that distance is actually kind of slow. Well, maybe the button I'm using is not fast enough. There we go. Alright, and from this distance, it's advantageous. So let me go ahead and use one guard jump with my Terry, and then jump after the after they block. So if you look, with, let me tell you what this means. So I said if the CPU jumps after they block, and I'm jumping at the same time. So as soon as the block stun is over, we're both able to act. So who gets to act first? So my Terry is almost on the ground already. It's gonna land on the ground before the other Terry which means that my toe is able to act first. So that's what it means for the frame advantage with a burn knuckle on tip. All right, so that's one usage of burn knuckle. Um, let's see, what else? The C version, okay. So the C version has a little bit more style and it travels a lot farther. But it doesn't travel full screen. You need to be a little bit away from full screen for this move to hit. Distance wise. Alright, so punish window wise, the C version has the same property of being safe or even advantageous at the tip. And wow, I still can't connect. So 3 4 less screens away. So, uh, the difference between. The other difference is that. The C version does a hard knockdown, whereas the A version does a soft knockdown. The other difference is of course damage, it does a little bit more. Uh, there's more start up, and of course if you use it closer, it's much more punishable. The EX version travels full screen, it also does a hard knockdown, and it does an insane amount of damage at 160. And just the same though, it's also more punishable. So. Test the computer to go ahead and do it like this. So obviously at the tip it's not gonna be punishable, but from here it's gonna be punishable. So that's not something you wanna throw out randomly. If in all versions of burn knuckles, you just wanna stick with the A version just because you use it for combos, whereas the C version doesn't combo except from out of uh, juggles. And the EX version one thing I forgot to mention is that it's really fast like, combo from lights. So that's one thing that you know to keep in mind. But otherwise, between all the burn knuckles, don't use the C version uh, almost at all. Like, it's it's really uh, punishable, it's just unsafe. There might be a low chance that they won't punish you, but there's not a chance that you're willing to take. If you want to use it, just go ahead and just run in and use the A version to get that guaranteed uh, tip frame advantage. Alright, moving on, we have EX Crack Shoot. So, oh, sorry, did I say EX Crack Shoot? I just meant Crack Shoot. So, Crack Shoot is just closer to back kicks. So, the difference between the light version and the heavy version um, is just the startup time and distance and frame advantage. So, the light version comes out faster and travels a shorter distance. The, C uh, the D version comes out slower. And travels a lot farther. The other difference is the advantage on blocks. So the B version, the B version is slightly negative. Whereas the D version is neutral on block. So the D version is completely safe, even from command grabbers. Whereas the B version, you're gonna get command grab instantly by characters like Clark and Daimon. Alright. Um, damage. In, really, there's no difference in damage, by the way. They both do 78. Same thing with stun. Alright, the EX version. 
So if you think that a crack shoot comes out a little bit faster, it doesn't combo from light stones, so just keep that in mind. It needs to combo from hard normals. And as you can see, it crosses a ground bounce, so you can get a conversion off of that. Uh, let's see, distance-wise... Distance-wise is the same as the light, the B version of crack shoot. Uh, speaking of crack shoot, the one thing I almost forgot to mention is that it has some pretty good anti-air properties just because of its angled hitbox, so let me show you. Let's see. Let's have the computer jump in on me. So you get anti-air to opponents like that. And it is possible to get a confirm off of this, so let me show you what I mean. If you hit them early enough in a way that you can recover fast enough, you're able to get an air reset. However, you won't be able to get something like a rising tackle, unfortunately. Let me test that out for you. Okay, you can get an EX rising tackle. Maybe if you hit them low enough, you're able to get the other rising tackles, but I wouldn't risk it. You can get a super afterwards. No, it doesn't seem like you're able to. So yeah, that's crack shoot in a nutshell. Alright, moving on, we have Rising Tackle. So let me get this guy to stop jumping. So, Rising Tackle is Terry's reversal option. The A version doesn't have any invincibility, so you don't want to use it at all, actually, the A version. Uh, there's no benefit to using the A version because it comes out, the C version comes out as fast, it does more damage, and it has full invinci it has invincibility on it. So there's no reason to use the A version at all. Even trajectory wise, the A version still moves the turret a little bit forward. So it's not, uh, you know, if you want to use the, it's just not, you know, there's, there's no use for it at all whatsoever. One thing you want to keep in mind though is that because it moves Terry a little bit forward, you don't want to use it as an anti-air. That time was a bad example. Let me put myself in corner. See, if as long as the character is jumping forward, your anti-air is more likely to whiff. Uh, this time, I'm doing a little bit too early. Realistically, I wouldn't be able to have. I wouldn't be able to do it this fast. Okay, that's a little bit too reliable for demonstration purposes, but. Um, most of the times, you'll be able to jump over it, so don't use it as an anti-air, use it as a reversal. Oh, it's also possible to super cancel his rising tackle, and um, there's not much use for it unless you're doing it in an actual optimal combo, but it is a property you can be aware of. Now the EX version does more damage. Attitude. It comes out slightly faster, but it also moves forward. So unlike the version in 13, it doesn't move him directly upwards, so he still has that risk of being jumped over on. So that's something you want to keep in mind. And um, yeah, that's about it for Rising Tackle. It's pretty simple. There's not nothing advanced about it. Power Charge. All right. So for Terry's Power Charge, this is gonna be this is one of his better moves in 14. Um, the light version can, can combo from hard normals. It can't combo from it can't combo from lights. There we go. The D version cannot combo from hards at all. Technically, it can only combo from a blow. Bomb. All right. Another thing about the B version is that if you use it at point blank range, um, you're gonna it's gonna be negative. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that. One guard jump. Slightly negative. On the bright side, you're never gonna use this point blank range. If you use it and cancel it, you set the guard off. And then have them guard one guard jump because it's not a true black screen. And you're always gonna be positive on that. Uh, if you use it from any sort of string, even from this string. Alright, so, um, the D version is, it has more style, and the knockback is different, actually. Let me go over that real quick. So, the D version leaves them standing, the D version always knocks them away. And you can always get a juggle afterwards. 
uh, the D version, it starts up slower and it has a lot more uh, it has a lot more frame advantage. So even if I use this point blank range, uh, wrong wrong guard option. If I use that point blank range, I'm still gonna be positive. Actually, no, sorry, that's neutral. But anything further away from that is gonna be frame advantage for, t for my turn. And especially the other tip, which is good. Alright, so here's, where, here's how you wanna use this move. You're always gonna wanna use this after a blowback. And anytime that you wanna pressure them, especially if you have a defender, you just wanna keep using your D power charge because. You're always gonna have frame advantage, which allows you to keep up the pressure. And it's gonna force you to use a bar or meter to get out of the pressure. It is true that they can reversal through the button, uh, through the blowback and the power charge, but it's gonna be a risk that they'll have to take. Uh, they can guard cancel roll, so yeah, be on the lookout for that. But otherwise, they're gonna have to spend bar for it. The EX version has super armor. Uh, it combos from hearts. And it wall bounces on hit, which allows to, to extend his combos. Um, that's pretty much it for power charge. You just gonna want to use the D version a lot. The B version, B version. Um, if you're ever gonna use a B version, you should just use the D version. As for the EX version, you can use this against, let's say. Projectiles. If you're in the wall maximum for whatever reason, and you want to force your way through, the new version is always a good version to use. All right, supers. You have power blazing, the X power blazing, and the Buster Wolf. But let me go over power gazer first. Now, uh, power gazer is a viable reversal option. So let me go ahead and set this to the is reversal wake ups. Oh wow. Oops. That's uh the not supposed to happen. Alright, that was the fifth option. Alright, so let me go ahead and do this again. So it does have invincibility options. And naturally the EX version will also have it, so I'm not gonna really demonstrate that. Um on the downside oops this super is extremely punishable, so that's not something you want to use. Actually, that wasn't really a punish. Uh, the character is really bad, but yeah. Uh, the power, power Gazer is a very punishable super in this game, so don't use it as a reversal. Actually, you don't want to use it at all. If you're going to use a reversal, you're going to be using the C Rising Tackle, which doesn't cost any bar. And in a combo between Power Gazer and Buster Wolf, you want to use Buster Wolf instead because it does more damage in general. EX Power Gazer, another problem with it, um, the difference is, is it does do 3 hits. Oops, let me turn off his reverses. So in the corner, if you do EX Power Gazer, you only get 2 out of 3 hits, whereas if you do it away from the corner, oops. Wow. Alright. There we go. You have three hits, but um, you don't want to use the super at all. Just pretend that it doesn't exist, because Buster Wolf is the much better. Uh, it's a much better super in terms of properties and damage. So here's what Buster Wolf is. I'm pretty sure most people will know what it is. Uh, it comes out really fast. Um, the, e the regular version does not have any invincibility properties. Level one, that is. So let me go ahead and knock him down. Medium. Oh, sorry about that. I still have a power gazer active. Right, so it's gonna work with plus the wood, and there's no invincibility properties. The EX version on the does have invincibility properties. And one thing is that it goes to a projectile, so let me go ahead and set the computer to go ahead and throw out a power wave. The big so the EX version has projectile visibility, but the regular version does not. It does not. So 
You don't want to use the. You don't want to use the double unfortunate the possible except maybe in a combo. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention about power gazing. Huh, what the hell? Alright, there we go. So what I was trying to dis what I was trying to demonstrate was like, the simple properties of power gazing in terms of combos. It's not uh not combo friendly at all actually because it whiffs a lot. Even if you use EX Power Gazer. So uh you might have noticed that even though Power Gazer does more uh more damage raw, uh in a combo with the Buster Wolf usually will do more damage. Alright. Climax. Start out the game. So there goes a rising B attack. If he hits, we go into that full animation. If he whiffs, he'll do this power dunk animation. Now, let me test real quick if it's an over. That was my own execution. It's not an overhead. So you don't need to block it high. Um, the animation, it is, po it is possible to get a... Um, the power dunk animation even on hit on certain combos, so let me show you. Wow. <laughs> hmm. I feel like a Steam version. Alright, I'm just gonna do this one last time. So, uh, there we go. Alright, so here we're just gonna get the partial animation of his climax. So, uh, the, so when you're doing combos, just make sure the opponent is low enough to the ground where the full animation of his climax will connect. Alright, so that's everything about Terry in terms of move sets. Uh, let's go over the full details of how to use and play Terry. So, hit confirms C and D. Remember, if you if they if they block it, don't use the rising number. Just if anything, just stick with the two hits and go straight into a quick max. The D will always connect into rising up even on block. Um, from lights, you could do crunching B, crunching A into his command, uh, into his command upper. Or you can even do a uh, country B and B into that, which to me is much easier to do. So if you want to use rising upper as a confirm, it's best to use that string, leaving standing A. Alright, now what to cancel into? So on hit, obviously you always want to cancel into burn knuckle. But on block, you want to cancel into the B version of crack shoot because it leaves you neutral. Or you wanna use a D version of power charge on block. And that will also connect with um, a full block. Alright. Now confirms it to quick max. Alright, the easiest one for Terry is just gonna be crunchy B, crunchy B into his far B. Now that didn't connect, but that's because I hit the crunchy C too late. I'm still hitting it too late. There we go. Okay. So that's a hit confirmed with uh, Crunchy B, Crunchy B, and Far B. You can also combo into his Ghost B, but you gotta mind the distance. If you do a little bit too far, like here, your your close nose and your close D is not gonna connect. And your close C might also not connect. But let me test this. See, there you go. It's a little bit harder to confirm into a full combo. So, my recommendation is if you're using this, make sure to just go into Crunch and C. And I keep botching on my, uh, my execution, but there you go. Alright, now other confirms. Um, Another one you can do is you can land up to four hits, and it'll still combo. Just in case three hits is not good enough for you, it is possible to do four hits. 
still get all the hits in, and that's not optimal damage combo, but I'm just showing you that it's possible. Now, for confirms, um, if you want to get a full confirm though, something you want to learn is being able to combo three lights into his uh, into his uh, back knuckle. So you can do uh, two, eight, three of them. So for a total of four hit points, right? just because you're always going to get your close normal. So, so that's the better confirm that you should have under your belt. Now another confirm you want to have is RD into quick max because you always get that close normal for another um, full combo. So those are your quick max confirms. All right, combo wise. From mid screen, anywhere on the screen, um, with one bar, here's what you want to do. You want to go into. Uh, wrong confirm. There we go. It's my turn EX crack shoot, which whiff, you want to run up a little bit. Wow. There we go, burn up, the X crack shoot, and then you use the C version of Burn Knuckle, and that will get you 408 damage. So that's what you want to use with Terry with one bar. Now, if you have him in the corner, what you want to use is EX crack shoot, B version of Crush, and EX rising tackle. I'll give you 437 from the strongest hit confirms. And from lights, you can still get. What the hell? Alright. You can still get 376. So, roughly, you're gonna get almost 400 damage with one bar with Terry, which is extremely good. Alright, now if you have two bars, if from mid screen, Here's what you want to do. You want to use power charge, and then you want to go into C burn knuckle. Into That's going to give you almost 600 damage from those confirms now. From a light confirm. Wow. next because it sucks this much normally, guys. It's a uh, steam version. But uh, if I play on my PS4, it usually doesn't drop as much. Okay, so that's your mid screen combo for mid screen. Uh, for two bars, it's really a lot of damage and something you just want to keep in mind. But uh, one thing you need to know or be aware of at all times is the distance on the screen. If you're too close to the corner, you get a power charge, they're gonna bounce over your head, which means you won't get your full combo. So in the corner, what you want to do is go into the execution and then burn knuckle into plus the wall. Wow, look at that. Jesus Christ. I feel like my game's been a little bit slow. There we go, okay. So for this, you're gonna get a little bit less damage than your mid screen combo, but it's not really that much of a difference, not the, really that much of a loss, and you'll still keep the corner. And it, so yeah, it's just gonna be simple, you know, EX crack shoot, burn knuckle into his possible. And this combo is possible for mid screen as well, but uh, if you're gonna get a combo for mid screen with two bars, you might as well be using the other one I just showed you that uses power EX power charge into C burn knuckle. Alright, an alternative 2 bar combo in the corner that you could use is actually very difficult, but let me just go ahead and show you. Uh, I actually recorded the dummy to do this because I'm not able to get it at all times. So, let's see, I think it's this one. So, you do want to go into the Brick's Country, the Power Charge, C Rising Tackle, and the EX Bustle, and that gives you 599. So, a 20 damage difference from the other corner combo if you want to risk the execution for it and get that almost 600 damage there you go it's possible for that to happen all right um, here are some alternatives so um, for example if you just get the if 
you just get the down C. Sorry, not down C, crouching C. You can just go into EX Bundaku, and this is only if you this is only if you can't get your close number into EX Power Charge. Uh, in other cases, you can just keep it to crack shoot and simple uh, and into a um, burn knuckle into Buster Wolf. But yeah, all right. So good and bad, bad things about Terry. So let's start with the good things. First of all, he's your above average damage output with one or two bars in and out of the corner and regardless of position so that's the good thing about Terry his two bar combo as you can see does 500 at least and almost 600 on a good hit confirm uh, another thing he's got low risk approach options so burn knuckles safe, back shoot is safe, power charge is safe actually advantageous and allows you to keep up the pressure so um, so well, Terry has like the best raw specials to use at any level. Just because there's there's a lot of momentum that it can give Terry. Uh, if you combine his low risk specials with Far D and Far B, then you know what you get is a really solid ground game with Terry. If you're able to utilize Terry uh, in a wise way and low risk way, then you're gonna be really hard to get in. You're gonna be a, a wall, so to speak. Another good thing about Terry is that he works in any position, first, second, or third. So that means Terry's really great for team composition, especially if you're using characters that you feel or are only comfortable with in specific positions. Like for me, I'm comfortable with like, let's say, like if I were to use Hein, then I would need to put him on second. Or you know, Shune, although I just have to put him on anchor. So I'm using two characters like that. Where am I going to put my third character? So Terry is a good answer to that. Um, you could, he will be be able to mold with your team. All right, here are some downsides with Terry. Uh, he's difficult to confirm with. It's a little weird to say because Terry is supposed to be an easy character, but let me explain. Rising Upper, it has the special cancel properties that you want, but it doesn't have the range that you need. Back Knuckle has a range you need, but it doesn't have the special kinds of properties that you want. So, uh, pressure wise, when you don't get a full hit confirmed into a combo, you know, uh, the most you can do is just really like uh, this into Burn Knuckle. But obviously, you just you can't combo into lights with Terry. Uh, you can't combo into specials from lights with Terry, I should say. Except for the C Rising Tackle. That's not Rising right Tackle. This is Rising Tackle. But yeah, so that's one of the things with Terry. It's a little bit difficult to hit confirm with him just because he doesn't have an easy uh, hit confirm into a special. And uh, that's not even the beginning. The other part is that you have different combos mid screen with one or two bars. So. Um, if I try to do my mid screen combo and I'm too close to the corner, it's gonna whiff. And if I do my corner combo, I need to make sure that I'm using different moves instead. Instead of EX Power Charge, I'm gonna be using EX Crack Shoot. So, and not to mention yeah, the moves you're gonna be using uh, between one and two bars is gonna also be different. So you kind of, even though Terry is a simple character, you have to memorize kind of a different amount of combos and have that spatial awareness. That while you're doing your combo so that you don't drop them. And this is if you're trying to play an optimal Terry. If you want to stick to one combo and with Terry all the way through, you, I guess you could do that, but it's not going to be a really optimal Terry. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, he has a lack of mix ups. He doesn't have high lows. He doesn't have a cross up. He doesn't have an overhead. So getting in with Terry and getting a hit from him is going to be really difficult. You're not going to be able to get. Um, it confirms as easily as characters like Kyo or Zarina. Alright, but let's make Terry work anyways. So, strategy. So, before I go over strategies, if you're gonna pick up Terry and you wanna take him seriously, here are things that you need to have. You need to be able to, you need to, be able to confirm into Quick Max using his Black Knuckle Command Armor because this combos from his lights. There you go. And it also gives you your. It also allows Terry to do his more optimal damage combos because he will get the close normal out of it. 
And secondly, you need to be able to convert off of blowback. Or if you get blowback, you need to be able to do that. You need to be able to react to it. And if they block the blowback, then you get a power attack. You still need to be able to react to that. It's going to be key to getting Terry, is getting those conversions on reaction. Another thing, excessive use of power charge and the awareness of the opponent's guard meter. So, as a Terry player, you're going to be able to get the corner on one at least. And his power charge is always going to give him, um, it's always going to give him the pressure. So a lot of the times, you're going to find your opponent guarding a lot if you're successful at your pressure. And if you have them in the corner, if you have their back against the walls, always pay attention to the guard meter so that you can always convert when you finally get that guard crush. Uh, let's see. Other Oh, excessive use of anti-air rising upper into a burn knuckle cross under. So, for anti-airs, just keep using this a lot because you don't need to worry about how late to cancel. You can always cancel into burn knuckle, you better cross under, and you'll just get that conversion. Just anti-air with this a lot. Uh, and what else? You need to have a combined use of power wave, burn knuckle, and crack shoot for distance zoning. So he has contact dog, just don't forget it. And if they try to jump Try over it, your crack shoe will be able to cover them with all your burn knuckle. Just keep in mind that uh, not to use it too much and to make Try sure that you're at a safe distance when you're using it. And finally, one bar, uh, there is a trick that you can use with Terry. You know I said he didn't have a cross up? He actually has, I mean he doesn't have a mix up. So there, there is something you can do with Terry as a mix up if you have one bar. So, let's see. He has charge. He has crack shoots. And you could cancel the close knuckle into burn knuckle. And you could do something ambiguous with this too. Wow. Alright, sorry for back this so much. Steven here this is running a little bit weirdly. He's dropping my frames and dropping my inputs. He has power charge. Damn, shoot. There we go, so you're supposed to air reset that into... Let me just keep this up. Air reset this. Actually, it doesn't work that way. I guess I'm just going to keep doing this. Power charge, EX crack shoot. There we go. Okay, finally. Fuck. So, you can do power charge, and it, it, usually you'll be able to cross under. Burn Knuckle can also cross under, but it really depends on the spacing. Damn. There you go. Well, it didn't cross on but I still got the reset. So that's a mix up that you can have with Terry. Alright, so those are the things you need to have under your belt. So, quick recap. Quick back confirm from lights into his back knuckle. Anti airs with rising upward, convert off the blowbacks, power charge, and let's see, that cross under one bar combo. Alright, here's the game plan with Terry. He's not a combo oriented character, so don't try to get combos. What you want to do is just outplay them on the ground. So don't try to get it. Don't fo don't worry about getting a hit confirmed. Worry about playing them with neutral at with far B and far D, and use lotus options like burn up and crack shoot and power charge. You need to force the hand with power charge. Bait reversals, bait the guard cancel options, and if you're able to bait them, you're able to punish them. Uh, what else? Uh, basically, the idea is to just outplay them on the ground and force them to do something unsafe. So when they finally do something unsafe, you can either get some sort of grab or maybe a full punish combo. Alright, and you know how Terry doesn't have mix-ups, so if you don't have a lot of mix-ups, you use a lot of reps. So for example, if I'm suffocating the, the opponent into the corner like this, and I throw out far D to keep him in there, see this far D is going to keep him from jumping out, and they also won't be able to punish it or get out of it, they will just have to block it. If they try to roll it, I'm going to have enough time to grab them, because they're going to be rolling towards me obviously. 
Uh, the idea is one, try to get them into the corner and keep them there. Now, if you're fighting against Terry, don't let him get the power charge pressure started. And also, if you're able to roll out of it, so that's one thing you could do. Uh, you can also guard cancel roll. You do need the bar to do it, but it is possible. Uh, and also, try to stay out of the corner against Terry. If he has you in the corner and you don't have any bar, and he gets his power charge uh, pressure started, then it's going to be really difficult to do with it. You're going to be dealing with a lot of chip and the risk of guard crush the longer that you stay in the corner. <clears throat> Uh, one other thing, it's difficult to keep him out because he's got some pretty good normals and those low risk specials, but you can use it to your uh, you can use it to your advantage. So for example, let me go ahead and play this recording here. So if, for example, if they use power charge and try to cover with <coughs> crap shit. Now I'm able to poke him out of it, or stay out of range, get a full combo with punish. Another thing about crack shoot is that you're able to hit out of it. So for example, you could just jab him. You can see, you can still react to it, and he does have startup animation on it, so you can still, you know, you can hit him out of it if you have the reaction. Remember, it's an arcing hitbox. It starts from behind him and then all the way around finally to the front so you have plenty of time to interrupt him all right uh what else don't be afraid of getting quick max by terry so in other words you know you want to challenge his buttons um a lot of play terry players they're probably not going to be looking into one hit into a quick max combo uh, especially since it's a little bit difficult for terry in general so because of there's a low risk of getting a full max combo, a uh, full max, a full quick max combo by a Terry player at a neutral, um, just challenge his buttons. You know, there's holes in between. So you can probably uh, go under certain of his buttons and things like that. Just you know, don't be afraid to press buttons and fight back a bit. Except if you're going up against his power charge. And one last thing, even though it is difficult to keep uh, to keep him out, um, you want to try to rush him down instead. So, uh, what I mean is, playing a distance game against Terry could work to your disadvantage. He does have the power wave to counteract projectiles, and if you try to, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> bait him into jumping, and you try to meet him in the air, he just crack shoot you instead. So what you want to do is just rush him down. Alright, so that's it for my Terry tutorial. I know it's a little bit sloppy. It's been a while since I've done tutorials. I'm still kind of learning how to be crisp and uh, uh, fine tune with it. But I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. Uh, you can go ahead and ask me questions in the comments. And I'll see you next time.